we have yet another massive addition to Obsidian. Today we're going over using Obsidian to manage our projects by having a table, calendar, a board, a gallery, and a database folder all in a centralized location. This is all made possible with the help of a fantastic plugin created by Marcus called Projects. And in the later parts of this video, I'll show you how to combine the power of this plugin with the database folder plugin by Raphael. And because of that, I'm going to assume you're familiar with YAML and the database folder plugin in Obsidian. If you're not, then make sure to watch these short videos right here before watching this one. I've been speaking to both Marcus and Raphael, and I'm super excited to show you this. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need, as always, is to install the plugin. So we're going to come here to Settings, Community Plugins, Browse, and we're going to search for Projects. And it's this one here by Marcus Olson. We're going to install and enable. And there's actually no plugin settings to configure, so we can go straight into it. So now if we exit out of this, we come here to the left side panel, we have a new icon here, which if we click it, it's going to take us to our projects. You can also access it via the command palette by pressing command P and typing in projects, show projects. And lastly, my preferred method as always is to assign a hotkey. So if you come here to settings, hotkeys, and search for projects, and over here for show projects, we can customize the hotkey. So if I press the little icon here, I can press a hotkey. For me, the one that makes the most sense is command shift P, P for projects, and then I can come here, Command Shift P, and it's going to take me to that same page. So now we can either create a new project or try a demo project. The demo project was provided by Marcus and it's helpful to reference if you need it in the future. But I think the best way to start from scratch is to first create a new folder. So I'm going to come here, create new folder. And because we're using my channel as an example, I'm simply going to title it from Sergio. And personally, I have a lot more notes inside my From Sergio folder that I don't think belong in my content calendar. So what I'm going to do instead is create a subfolder here and title it videos. And now I'll just create a project inside this subfolder. So I'm gonna right click it and click create project and folder. And as you can see, the plugin already populated these two fields here, the name and the path, which both are correct. So we have some options here now. And the first is whether to use data view or not. And I prefer to leave this off as otherwise your project's views are gonna be read only, which is not ideal. And I'm gonna leave the rest here as default. And then we have templates. And as it says here, it's templates to choose from when you create new notes. In my case, each new note is gonna be a video. So I'm gonna apply my new video template. And I'll show you that template in a second. And then over here, we have a brand new feature that just got released, which is excluded notes, which we won't use for now, but we'll get back to it in a second. So now I'm gonna create project. And now we have our project here and it's empty since we have no notes in the video subfolder. So before we move on, I just wanna show you my new video template. And as you can see, just a bunch of YAML headers and then a bunch of titles. And these titles help me plan out and research my videos. And out of all these YAML headers, only these three are populated because every time I'm adding a new note, in this case, a new video, I know it's going to be on the backlog. It's not going to be published and priority is going to be four, which I'll get to that in a second. If you want to grab this and use it yourself, feel free. I'll have the link in the description to a repo where I published this. So now if I come back to the project by pressing command shift P and I add a new note, it's going to ask me the title. So in this case, I can use my last video, which was space repetition. And then for template, new video template, I'm going to create a note. And now it lives here and I already picked up the three populated YAML headers. One thing I want to point out here is that for now, the YAML header is not being applied from the template if it's not populated. So if I open up a note here that we just created by pressing the little icon here, you can see that only these three values were applied. If I open up the new video template, there were a bunch that weren't. And I've spoken to Marcus about it and it will be fixed soon. In fact, it might already be by the time you're watching this. So let's add another note here, which was the video before this one, which was video number 34. And it was a habit tracker video. And I'm gonna apply the template, create note. And let's remove the path here because I don't really benefit from seeing that path. And that leaves us with name, status, published, which we can then toggle on or off and priority. I really like the priority feature as I have plenty of video ideas, but some are low priority while others are high priority. So having this here is very helpful. I actually use the priority feature the same way I do on Todoist, which is one for important and progressively less important all the way to four. I made a video on how I set up my Todoist from scratch and I'm gonna to link to it somewhere here on the screen. All right, but now these notes here are empty as all that they have is the template that was applied to them. So let's now go into both of these notes and let's actually use Obsidian's new native feature called Stacks, which is basically just a sliding paints plugin that Obsidian adopted natively. So to do that, we come here to the top right and in this arrow here, we press Stack Tabs. And then while holding Command, we press this button here. So now we have this note over here on the right. So I'm not gonna add some fields here in the YAML header. So for this video 35, it was due November 10th. And this right here 
was due October 25th. So now if we come back to projects, you can see we have a new column here for the due date. And you can edit this and all the other fields straight from the table. So if I double click this, I can change this from November 10th into say November 12th. And then if I open up this note, you can see here that the metadata was changed accordingly. So now I can just add more fields here, such as the topic of the video, which in this case was Obsidian, the sponsor, which for that video was brilliant. And then I can do the same for the other note here. So for here, topic was unsurprisingly also Obsidian. And then sponsor for that one was short form. So now if we come back to our table view, you can see we now have a topic column as well as a sponsored column. And we can change this the same way we could change the due date. So in here, if I change the topic from Obsidian to apps, then I open up this note, you can see it now shows apps as a topic. And the way this is set up right now is that the YAML headers will dictate the order of the columns. So if we open up one of these notes here, you can see that it comes status, published, priority, and that's why we have status published priority here. And this is an active feature request, so I think this will be fixed soon, but I hope that in the future we can just drag and drop the columns based on what we want, and it's gonna change the metadata accordingly. So let's not look at the views because we're just scratching the surface here. If we come here to new, and then we press new view, and if you come here on type, you can see there's a total of five views, depending on whether or not you have the database folder plugin installed. And none of these five views are destructive. Each of these views essentially just presents your notes in a different way. So let's look at the calendar view by pressing calendar and we can leave the rest as default and we're gonna press add view. And as you add more and more views, they're gonna show up here at the top so that you can toggle between them. So let's put the calendar on month view. And as you can see, the calendar view is picking up the dates from the do YAML header. And in here, check if you change this to published, I now have the option to toggle a video as published straight from the calendar view. So for this one here, if you come to table, you can see that's unpublished. But then if I toggle this on here, come back to table, and now it's published. You can also create a new note straight from the calendar view. So let's say that I have a new video idea and it's due November 25th. So in here, I can just double click this, give it a name, and then I'll just apply the new video template. And now if I press this note holding command, you can see that we now have a due date, November 25th. So let's now look at other views. So if I come here and I click on new view and add board, we now have essentially a Kanban board. And just like a Kanban board, you can see your notes in the board view based on a specified parameter. So if I come back here into the table and in here status, I change this from backlog to up next. I can then come back to the board and in here status, I can change this to status. Now we have two different sections here, one for backlog, one for up next. So for my channel, I have six different boards here. I have one for backlog, next up, scripting, editing, uploaded, and then finally published. The board view is missing a big feature, which again might even be fixed by the time you're watching this, which is the ability to drag and drop one note from one column to another while simultaneously updating the metadata in the process. All right, so then we have a gallery view, which is really cool. So I'm gonna add it the same way I did the others by coming here to new view, press gallery, I'm gonna add view. So now if I come here into one of these videos like the habit tracker, I can just add one final YAML header for image. And now I can just link to an image in my vault. So in this case, I have my Obsidian Tracker thumbnail, and then I can just exit out of this, and in here, cover, I can just put in image, and it's gonna render the image that I gave it. And then I can just do the same for space repetition, and when I press enter, it's gonna be rendering here as well. And there's one more view that is super powerful, which is that you can have your database folder plugin working alongside the projects plugin. But before that, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, which is Rise. Rise is an intelligent time tracker with the beautiful dashboard that automatically tracks and categorizes your work activity in the background. The reason I'm a big fan of Rise is because it tracks what I'm working on automatically, even my breaks without me doing anything. If you've ever used any time tracker at all, then you know that there's so much friction involved with setting it up and most importantly, with operating it. With Rise, there's not much you need to do to get up and going. It works across all of your apps and you can customize your experience by creating custom categories and get better insights into how your time is spent. It has basically everything you could ever want in a time tracker. You can even set goals like set a minimum amount of work hours or maximizing a specific category. Try Rise for free and maximize your productivity. The first 1,000 sign up with my code from Sergio or the link in the description will get 25% off their first three months with Rise. Thanks again, Rise, for sponsoring this video. 
All right, so let's look at the last view. And I made a video on the database folder plugin, but the whole point of it is to create Notion-like databases inside Obsidian. And you can have the database folder view right here in the projects plugin with the click of a button. So if I come here, click new view, I can just choose database folder and press add view. And then I can come here to the database settings. And in here under header templates, we have an option select file as columns template. So in this case, either of them will work. I can just put in the 35 space repetition. I can press save columns from file and then give it a second. I'm gonna exit out of this. And now we have all the YAML headers from that file be applied here as columns. And now we can hide whichever ones we don't want. So in this case, I don't want the image here. So I'm gonna press hide. And I don't know why this is there, so hide as well. And then we can move it around to whichever way you prefer. But now if I come here to table, you're gonna see that there's a new file here. And that's the file that the database folder plugin creates. And that's what this new feature that was just released with version 1.2 is for. So if I come here to edit project, there's an option, exclude notes. So I can just come here and type in 598, save, and that one's taken care of. I like to use all of these in conjunction because they both excel at different things. For instance, in here, there's one feature with the database folder view that isn't present in the other ones, at least for now, which is the filters. And because I have an ever-growing list of videos here, the filters that this plugin provides, which you can find right here, are very helpful if I want to add a filter or a group. I also really enjoy certain features of the database folder, such as property types and particularly the select function. A lot of the fields in my videos, such as topics or music, benefit from just seeing a list of options and to have me select the one that I want. For instance, it's not often that I plan out a video that's not related to Obsidian, and it's also not often that I choose a background music that I haven't used before. So yeah, I really benefit from having all of these different views here that all together really help me plan out my videos. The roadmap for this plugin is also really exciting, and Marcus is super active, and other devs are already working on integrating their own plugin with projects. If you're a plugin developer and you want to work with Marcus, you should definitely reach out to him via the links that I left in the description. I also placed a link there to buy Marcus a coffee for his efforts on creating a great plugin for all of us to use. Obsidian has certainly replaced many apps in my workflow, but the one app that I don't see Obsidian replacing for me is Todoist. It's the backbone of my workflow, and I made a video about how I set it up from start to finish, and you can find it right here. Thanks, Marcus, for all your work, and thanks to all of you for watching. Have a great one. Bye.